We're not going to get an intro today, Pastor Jake. Well, uh, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know what happened there. I was know? ready to come out like Hulk Hogan, and um, I know we're, we're going to have to do this to th- do this again. I mean, you know, no one knows just how much that you know you have the chance to get pumped up. You know, all the dancing that happens back there. You don't want to see what all happens. But, but you know, the bummer is, I mean, you get to see everybody dance, and if they're not smart enough to turn off their camera, and, uh, but this, you know, if you're, I mean, I don't get to see that. Like, uh, on, on Talking Stand Firm, you know, we have guests and, and things. I'm getting to see the controls. I'm getting to see everybody dance. It's, it's yeah, hard to be stuff. still, you know? Yeah. 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 So you get to see all that there. Behind the time. veil, as it were. Yeah. But well, I'm, I'm loving Terrence Red there. That is awesome. Of course, I'm, partial to black and red so we each need another color a different curl color wouldn't that be cool right uh, be more brady be. bunches wouldn't it but we got to organize, organize family, that right? yeah. yeah yeah let me try this one more time let's see if it happens <laughs> no, it doesn't. I, well praise the wow. lord big this, that was supposed to be right uh, we've got a big view by the way, welcome to end time church uh that's taryn that's chris anderson that's Jake McCandless. I assume we're all in the same location. We're just pointing directions. Uh, and of course, may I, and uh, I welcome you because you are the most important person here. And uh, we, we sincerely welcome you and thank you for joining us. Hopefully you're on our uh, website called endtime.church, uh, the live scr- scream. Hopefully it's not the live scream. Uh, the live stream tonight uh, looks like we've got Natasha and, and Joy and a whole bunch and Becky, Adriana, a whole bunch of friends. Fantastic. Thank you all for, for being here. If you're not there, that's all right. YouTube and Facebook and all that is cool <laughs> as well. Just so, what are we making jokes in there now? Am yeah, I- Randy says it's that beauty and the three beasts. I'll oh, tell you what, it's beauty <laughs> and the three handsome beasts. Ah. Uh, <sighs> I don't want to come in. Beast on that. that's that's so thematic to you know uh in time church, right? Daniel seven, right here. That's right. right. That's, right. that's right. And I the just worked out the, too, sea, so the beast. Yeah. Beast. <laughs> uh whatever we are, we, we yeah, are. Yeah, he's gonna have to be the beast here. from the sea. He's got a better tan than we do, Chris. So. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It looks pretty bad with his lighting. Yeah. <laughs> You're pretty pale, dude. I know, it's terrible. It's middle of winter. I gotta get on that. Depends on who you ask. I like so, the pale look. <laughs> this is this is terrible, but you know when we made the move to Streamyard, which has worked a whole lot better than Zoom, which uh, you know, and we're not sponsored by either one of them. But uh, yeah. the bummer is Zoom has a, a great touch up feature. You know, I mean, you lose like ten years, you get hair, you get a tan. I mean, all this yeah. cool stuff. You know, and so that's oh, the yeah. real bummer. So Streamyard, if you're listening. Get, step up your touch-up feature. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Come on. you can do you better. Airbrushed into being very disappointing in person. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> really That's right. That's, wait, are, are you saying that when when uh are, are you referring back to the get together we had at End Time Church at uh at Iron Faith? I said those, those <laughs> with great selfie skills should not be punished for looking okay. disappointing in person. I know everybody was disappointed. Uh, like they thought I was taller. I mean, I, that was what I. <laughs> <laughs> no, God forbid somebody and goes missing. Yeah. I have to use their Facebook profile to find them because nobody's Facebook <laughs> profile the way they look these days. <laughs> so that's what we're after, which is the most disappointing uh, personal appearance as we can get. And I'm, I'm winning that one. So we can. <laughs> We could get the, well, maybe now. I don't know. When I saw you, it's been a couple of years, so I'm sure you look. Yeah, I got probably about another 20 pounds on me. Yeah. I'm not, well, I, I can outrun you now. It's all good. So, uh, maybe. it's, uh, but it's scriptural. Didn't Paul say something about yeah, that? Right. That's what I, mean, I was going to say. Basically. He's disappointing in person, but boy, can he. Yeah. He around. basically told everybody, hey, yeah, yeah. I'm so, uh, you know, I, he had the face for a right, right? I understand. <laughs> Everybody was was very wonderful in person and non disappointing. <laughs> thank you so much. Finally, someone was great. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you. Uh, looks like Greg Gerardo here on YouTube. Bless you, brother. Um, thank you, man. Please chime in if you've never been here before. Say who you are, where you're from, or at least where you're from, because we love to do the international uh, thing here and see where folks are being drawn from throughout the earth. So that's very very exciting. Hey, Alex. Uh, yeah. Group meeting. That's, that's what we're trying to do, dude. Um, fellowship all, all over, wherever, whenever we want, um, cause we know the Lord has put you here. He's called you into something 
something magnetic um, about this, and he gets all the credit for this whole almost three years now that we've been doing this. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just very thankful. I'm thankful. Somebody, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't help but look over in the in our end time church chat room there. And somebody's talking about their raptured body. I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't. I want to get in there and mix that up, but I we must be the host right now. So yeah. So what what age are we going to be in our glorified bodies? What's the Bro, you know, somebody got to do the chat? That's what to do at the beginning. Um, yeah. yeah, right. <clears throat> Whatever age you feel. Thirty three, right? That's when uh, Jesus is. So, so we're all going to be thirty three. Was the perfect age. That's the going rate. I don't know. I want we all blew, everybody post your picture of thirty at thirty three. We all blew by that age, pretty sure. Chris, oh. Chris, going to be poking. But you got to like go back to like the black and whites, all right, or something. To, you know, <laughs> totally. <clears throat> I'm the oldest guy on this screen, man. Y'all don't know. So, um, or gal. Anyways, yes, uh, we do thank you. Please click all the buttons that you see. All right. Uh, there's a give oh. button. That's important. Hey, how about this? We were talking about this last night, Mr. Anderson. As far as d- uh, giving, here's what we want you to do. Or I think this is what the Lord wants you to do. Ask him during the service how much you should give tonight. And then do it. The end. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, you know, the wonderful thing about the New Covenant Church is that people follow what Holy Spirit put in their heart to give. You know, we, we think about the book of Acts. We look at the story of, uh, I forget their names now, about those that dropped dead because they held back some. Well, and they I, weren't yeah. obligated to give any. They didn't have to sell their house to do anything to give. But they lied about it after they did it. And uh, they dropped dead. Not saying anybody here is going to drop dead or anything like that. But the people there, the principles, the people gave as the Lord put on their heart to give and purpose for them to give. So you know what? Tonight, you know, just pray about it and uh, see what the Holy Spirit puts on your heart. And don't second guess it. Just do it. Let's go to that give button. It says give now and uh, click on that and just put it in there. Amen. And that's it. No pressure, no frills, no nothing. It's be obedient. And that's all any of us are going to do. Uh, but if you're not on the site, you can still go to endtime.church slash give and do it that way as well. So just wanted to mention that you can hit on the prayer uh, button, which is a little form that comes up. And it's actually just a contact form. You can tell us who you are, what's going on. And if you have any type of prayer or praise report or just contact, you want to say hello, use that uh, right away. And then after service, you can hit the playlist button, which has our previous um, week's messages going back. Several months. So go ahead and utilize all that, please. And there's a share button as well. We like we should say sharing is caring because it really is. None of us really know how m- many people we're affecting when we when we share these things. And um, it's true. We, we just don't. You know, we might think we do, but we, we really don't. So just utilize it. See what happens. Amen. Um, somebody's on YouTube saying 55 is a good age. Well, yeah, Randy, what did he say? I don't remember 33. <laughs> so Speaking of fifty-five, I'd say fifty-five dollars is a good number. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know, I'm not kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not, not touching that one. Uh, but yeah. praise God for all all of you. Seriously, we, we we love you so much, and um, I just love being in this family type of atmosphere. So, so what if we get to pick our age? You know, I mean, I don't. Which, which I'm not. You know, you're you're the tech guy, but you know. At least you used to. You had the system restore dates on your computer. Windows, you know? sure. Yeah, yeah. With, yeah uh, PC. So, uh, if uh, so, everybody kind of mental note what system you want, what year you want to restore back to. Make a note. You know, put it in your coffin. <laughs> That's right. And uh, <laughs> who knows what'll happen? Uh, amen. All right. Praise God. I think that's. Uh, um, what did I want to say? Oh, we have a group tomorrow called the Stand Firm Circle. Do yes, we do. And uh, so, if you're in the circle. Uh, you should have received a uh, email this afternoon. I just actually probably a couple hours ago. And uh, so we had our first meeting this past week. This is a nine week, uh, the stand firm circle. It's a nine week group to jumpstart your spiritual preparedness. And I thought it was an awesome time. And we had, uh, we've got uh, 16 on board. Uh, I think we had 13 with us uh, the other night and it was just an awesome time. It's 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 not meant to be something that blows you away with information. Rather, it's a chance just to work through uh, the the need to prepare, and then working through some steps and just some disciplines in your life to jumpstart that. And so, real excited about that. And so, the hope is is after these nine weeks and a and a couple weeks after that, uh, we will be launching uh, a continued stand firm firm circle. We're hoping to launch twelve uh, six groups at that time. And so, if you missed this go around, no problem. 
it's it's coming go back. The circle's coming go back around soon, and you can jump in and be a part of that. And so then the, the hope is in the fall to do that, do the circle another another run. And when we do that, we hope to launch twelve at that time. And if that happens, we're gonna have if if just that simple plan. Uh, happens, we're going to have 24 leaders who have volunteered and over 250 people, uh, going through jump starting their preparedness, spiritual preparedness. And we so hope it's a resource that not only you can go through and jump start your preparedness, but it also gives you a tool for uh, a loved one, somebody you care about, uh, that, you know, having these conversations, we try, right? We try to talk about, uh, what the Lord's revealing in his word, what we see happening all around us. And it's difficult, uh, really sometimes to walk through that. And so to have an opportunity to just say, Hey, come be a part of this Bible study with me and, you know, work through nine weeks. And it's, it's a, it's a getting your toes wet in the, the end time, uh, sector, getting your toes wet in the challenges to the faith, but really looking at strengthening your discipleship and, and uh, spiritual disciplines so that you're ready for when these challenges come. So please, please let us know. Go ahead and email me. Uh, and, uh, Jake at StanfordMinistries.com, email me, uh, message me, and uh, get on the list. We already have our, already have several signed up who are waiting for that next round. So real exciting stuff. Amen. And I, I was there. It's true. It's all true. Yeah. I mean, isn't that awesome? Pastor Matt, busy mm-hmm. schedule. Came and be, became a part of the circle. So I encourage you to do so as well. Amen. Let's do it. Very busy schedule. <laughs> how you fit it all in. I don't know. We don't know exactly. Uh, amen. So, uh, Pastor Jake, we know you wanted to uh, give us a, a word here before we got rolling tonight. So the floor uh, is yours, friend. Yes. Uh, so we talked about the Stand Firm Circle, which we launched. And so uh, probably, what, two or three weeks ago, uh, I guess three weeks ago now, uh, I shared that uh, I had talked with Pastor Christopher, uh, talked with our elders, and was looking at taking a a – Step back and taking a, a different role within end time church, which would be focusing on this, our small groups and stand from circle. And, uh, you know, I think everything that we do, uh, and following the Lord, it really comes down to us seeking him, us hearing his voice and us taking steps of obedience. That's what it comes down to. And when you take that step of obedience, you seek him again, you hear from him and you take that next step. Uh, but if you're like me, it's sometimes it's not easy to take those steps. And so, uh, been, the Lord been dealing with my heart for some time that, uh, wanted me to take a step back. And so I, we did that, had that discussion. Uh, but after you did that, went back and just like, ah, oh, Jake, you did not take the step you fully needed to take. And, uh, and so after talking with Pastor Christopher, talking with our elders, and uh, just working through it more, and, and Lord's just confirmed it over and over again. Uh, I am stepping down as from End Time Church. Um, it was it's starting tonight. We we originally had planned that this would be the, the night that the role would would change. Uh, so Pastor Christopher, we had talked about it a couple weeks ago, and, and got the chance to talk with the elders. Uh, so after tonight, I will be stepping down from End Time Church uh, to to focus in on uh, Stand Firm. And to do that, I will tell you, it's not an easy decision by any means. Um, absolutely love you guys. Um, you know, just, I, I, you know, Pastor Christopher knew that we were going to be sharing this tonight. And so I think it's been a little bit of reminiscing, uh, here in the, the, the intro and, um, you know, talking about steps of obedience in my life. Um, I was at a place go fast forward before 2016, uh, me and my wife and family were at a church that we absolutely loved. The church was just going great, just absolutely loved it. And Lord began to stir in our hearts this stuff about end times and preparing and standing firm and spiritually pre- preparing and all this stuff. And um, eventually led us, our hearts to step out. And it broke our hearts to, to leave. And we didn't know what we were going to do, how it was going to work. And I know people were taking bigger steps. Uh, but for us, it was a big step. And uh, so it took that step. Well, that step led to me writing spiritual prepper, spiritual prepper coming out. Uh, a friend of ours, a friend of End Time Church, Nelson Walters, reading that, contacted me and saying, hey, I believe in what you're saying. I'm going to be in a conference in Texas. That's pretty close to you, right? Which is not, which is, it's close to Arkansas, but not close to the part of Arkansas I'm in. But anyway, uh, so yeah, so sure. Uh, so we uh, they go to this conference to just, just to hang out. 
And I meet this guy named Christopher Manti, who was the, the MC and went to his table, shook his hand, just said hello. Um, you know, basically, basically saying, Hey man, you need to read spiritual prepper. I think was probably the real, the, the real conversation, but it was, uh, hello, you know, hello and uh, kept in contact. He was gracious to invite me up to Iron Faith, had the chance to meet Pastor Randy. And, uh, just from that point began, you know, keeping in touch. And then I'm personally going through a fast at, at the time, fast forward, I'm going through a, a fast and it was a fast where it just was that, Lord, this is, some things aren't opening up. Some things aren't working. Lord, <laughs> I'm not eating again till something does, basically, till you move. And uh, Chris gives me this call out of the blue, says, hey, uh, Lord's put on my heart to do this online church. And I wanted to, uh, I feel like I'm supposed to ask you to be a part of it. Uh, and just, I really cringed at the idea of an online church. I got to tell you, it just really, uh, I just couldn't see it. Uh, but I'm like, I, I'm praying for the Lord to reveal something to do something. So, uh, you know, probably, I guess the answer has got to be yes. And, uh, <laughs> we'll figure that out and, uh, had the chance to do this and had a chance to meet you guys, uh, be a part of this, this family. I mean, it's just been amazing. Um, you know, we had the conversations at that time about we didn't want to just be a service that people viewed. Uh, but wanted to be a place that where you could interact, you connect, you build relationships and, uh, you know, things may not, we may have not been able to put in place all that we dreamed at that point. But I think now through the app, through a lot of things, uh, and I, I went on a, a, a tour of meeting with online ministries and asking them, uh, what would you, you know, what, what are you doing? And what I kept hearing over and over again, we get views, we don't get any interaction. And so, uh, we set out on a mission to create interaction and we may have just, <laughs> created too much interaction, right? I mean, we're, uh, all the time, you know, communicating. We get the app and we've got so many different groups going and after partying and all of that stuff, which is just, a, just amazing, just awesome. And, uh, and so to see that is just great. But I just, I just know from my time so far in my life of walking and following the Lord, when you take steps, you never know what he's going to lead you into. And, uh, he's got relationships for you to, to make. Uh, people to connect and intersect in your life, amazing things. And so if anything, if I can just encourage you wherever the Lord leads, take that step, uh, no matter if you want to or not, or what he has in store for you, because I just, you know, the uh, relationships we mentioned international, I mean, just the, the amazing, just you know, all of us here would not have been here. Uh, really, if, if Chris hadn't stepped out uh, years ago and began networking folks around the, around the world in this. And so anyway, it's going on and on forever because, but I want you guys to know, love you. So thankful for end time church, thankful for uh, your encouragement, your support, your financial support, everything that you've, you've given and just the commitment you guys have made. Uh, it's so amazing. We, we had, you know, had this idea. We felt, you know, Lord said, step through it. We send out uh, emails just for see if anybody would be an interest to be a part of the uh, launch team. We had 70. I mean, how biblical, you know, what kind of confirmation can you have when you launch, you know, launch out with a uh, biblical, with a launch team of 70? How perfect, right? You know, and so uh, just uh, it's been so cool. So, so awesome. But I want to just thank you for everything and uh, love you guys. And uh, Chris, thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this and uh, just look forward to hearing and seeing and keep an eye on one of the great things that end time church does. Now I know some of you uh, who are involved in the stand firm circle, we mentioned that's going to continue. I'll be continued to, to lead that. Uh, and then as leaders continue to come through and, and reach out, that's all that's available as well. But uh, just want to thank you for the opportunity and um, take the, but you get, need to be obedient and to look forward. And I would greatly appreciate if you would continue to come on and, uh, and follow Stand Firm. And we're going to continue uh, really stepping on the gas pedal, pumping uh, content out and, and Stand Firm kids. And so uh, please come on and, and uh, partner with us and continue that because we're on the same mission uh, that you are on here at End Time Church. Love you guys. Amen, brother. Thank you. And uh, I know Taryn got a little misty eyed down there. Um, I, I, I'm just thankful the Lord uh, used to thank me. I mean, I'm, I'm thanking you for, for accepting that and filling in the, um, 
the blanks of, you know, what my skill set is because, you know, clearly we, we all have things that we're deficient in and some more obvious than others. And so I just want to thank you for um, being faithful in that um, to step out, even in something you're not comfortable with doing. And that, that says, that says a lot. <clears throat> and that's uh, the sign of obedience like this is too. So um, just keep on being obedient, brother, and uh, we'll follow you, follow your example. And yes, follow Stand Firm. Please get the get the books, get the the kids' book, right? The, right, the Return of the Lord. How awesome! Yes, yes. Hey, and the, I, I think I dropped a hint the other night. We we wrote we have written one for the Rapture, you know. So mm-hmm. so every, you know every, anybody all anybody cares about the end times is the Rapture the, in the Mark of the Beast. So Pretty that's, much uh, all we're gonna you know. Tell these kids, don't tell them about Jesus coming back. Just tell them we're getting, we're getting out anyway. So yeah, you gotta get on. Well, so you're coming back, time, right? <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna be uh, our guest uh, when that comes out. All right? Right. Sounds sounds good. At least sounds four good. part series. All right. <laughs> so uh, we were we were uh, as I suited up in my end time church shirt and uh, came in the studio tonight. You know, uh, my wife were talking. Maybe, I guess we're gonna have to like play taps and bring down the uh, the. Uh, the cave back behind me. So, anyway. oh man, <laughs> store it someplace Look, secret. Yeah. Right. There we go. Love you guys. Bless you, brother. So, uh, if if you don't mind, before we get into worship, I think it'd be a great idea to just pray over Pastor Jake and everybody that's in the chat room, whether you're at uh, Intime Church, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on Facebook, whatever it is, wherever you're at right now, if you're able to, just stretch forth your hand towards the screen towards Pastor Jake himself. We're just going to pray over him real quick before we get started. So, Father, we thank you, God, for this season that you have given us with Pastor Jake, God. We thank you, God, for the the dedication he has shown, not only to End Time Church, God, but to each and every one of us here, the various ministries that he supported, the functions he supported here, God. And, Lord, tonight we come together as a congregation of believers, God, and we bless Pastor Jake. We bless him, God, for all that he has poured into our lives, God, and we speak over his life right now. Just blessing, God. We, we speak the open doors over his life, Father. We thank you, God, that you are taking him on this new journey, Father, that he's stepping out in faith and being an example, God, not only to his family, but also to us here at End Time Church and what it is to follow you, even when it hurts, God, even when it's something that we don't necessarily want to do at the time, God, but we do it because we are being obedient to you, God. And we thank you, God, for that example of, and Pastor Jake as well. And so, Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we send him off, God, with our blessings, God, with our best, um, God, our best hopes placed into him, God. We send him forth, God, with just prayers of provision, God, with open doors, God. We thank you, God, for him, God. We bless your name, Lord, and Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen, friends. All right, let's worship the Lord together. That is why we're here, are we not? Stand by.
All right, praise God. Thank you, friends. Wonderful, talented people the Lord has surrounded us with here. Um, let's get right into it. So, ooh, awesome song as well. Uh, as we say, we're getting kind of nostalgic, I guess, but to look back on um, this period that Jake has been with us is really invaluable. Um, did you want to jump on, brother? I need hand signals. Yeah, cool. All right, hold on. There he is. Oh, he didn't give me, he gave me a chance to drop the hand signals. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I think after 30 years, we'd have these hand signals. Nah, out, we're, right? we're, just, we're figuring this stuff out as we go. <laughs> yeah, we can figure it out. I had to reset my computer, so it took me a minute to get back. Uh, so great. Let me pray for you. Father, right. I thank you so much for this opportunity to be a part of Entire Church. Father, I just uh, pray tonight that you uh, – Plow parts to hear your word. Father, you continue to cast your vision. And, uh, Father, I pray that we would hear and obey. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, brother. Thank you, man, for everything. I know. Don't leave us alone. All right. Praise God. So let's do what Jake said, and that's be obedient to the word of God because, like I say, um, it's it's tempting just to you know to look back and see what the Lord has done, but He's doing more, right? And He's going to do a great work, whether it be here or in the world, uh, before His Son returns, because He has to get a bride that is worthy of Him. Amen. Um, that is equally yoked, that is ready, that is white and clean in her garments. And so that is why we are here. So let us go to the Word of God and do something a little different tonight. Not that we don't go to the Word of God every week. We certainly do. Um, but I am just praying about what this should be about. And last night in our elders meeting, um, the message beginning, uh, coming to an end, right? This is really the end of the beginning. For whatever God has started with us here, he told us right from the get-go that the end of 2020 would be the end of something, and there would be a great transition of some kind, whether that be in the world, whether that be in the, the church you know, globally, or maybe just in our fellowship, but um, that certainly seems like it's come to fruition. Uh, so let's go direct to the beginning called Better Sheet, okay? book of Genesis, and we should know, those of us who uh, read Revelation, which should be all of us, um, that the story ends a lot like it began, and that the the ultimate goal and point of um, the Lord returning, other than that he loves us and he loves his creation and he wants to be with us, um, and redeeming us not only us and our bodies into those resurrection bodies, whether it be 33 years old or whatever um, at that time, but to redeem the actual creation itself, the actual earth itself and the creatures in the earth, because he made it for a very specific um, uh, logical, God forbid we assign logic to God, right? Uh, logical reason, which is that he is a father and he wants a family. He wants children. He wants a home with his family in a perfect place that he's created where there is no disruption. There's no sin, no curse. And that's where we're going to. That's the end destination, right? All this end time stuff. And we, like Jake said earlier, we think about the rapture. We think about the mark of the beast. We think about all these things that all happen before the Lord returns. Hardly ever we, do we talk about the millennium. Right when he's actually here for a thousand years, and hardly ever, even less so, think about the period after that, which is the restoration of the actual earth in all its splendor and with a family that is now perfected. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> that's where we're going. So let's check out the word of God on this topic right now. Genesis chapter one. I have a parallel um, up here with uh, Amplified on one side and the Something called the Orthodox Jewish Bible on the other because that's very good for original language in this um, section. All right, so in the beginning, God 
created the heavens and the earth. Right, for, and we could spend forever on this, but I want to do the whole chapter tonight. In the beginning, God, Elohim, Elohim. Anytime you see the, and some folks, they, this is old hat, and I apologize if so, but um, anytime you see the word or letters I am in, in English you know, on a Hebrew word, that means it's plural, more than one. Okay? So that's why Elohim is important there when it says God created his name, meaning Elohim, plural. Uh, created the heavens, also plural. If you look over here, what? Hashomayim, Hashomayim. Again, plural, the heavens. The heavens, and we're told there's more than one heaven, basically, or level. And the Haaretz, Aretz, the earth. Okay, we get that. Created, forming from nothing. We get that. That's the creator. That's our God. Uh, and then the earth was a formless and void or a waste and emptiness and darkness was on the face of the deep. Uh, granted, guys, all of these can be very, very in-depth and are worth studying for sure. Um, the earth was tohu vavohu, okay, without form and void. Now, that that phrase um, actually is brought up later in Jeremiah saying God does not create things tohu vahuahu. So there's a little bit of a uh, parentheses in there. The word probably should be became. The earth became uh, formless and void. Uh, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Ruach Elohim, the spirit of God, of this multi-pronged God, we call Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let's let's not be coy. Ruach uh, of God was moving, moving, brooding, hovering over the face of the waters. So it seems like the entire planet was covered with water. Then God said, Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. And it was good. Uh, Psalm 33, 6, that's what it says, Telahim over here. Psalm 33, 6, let's flip over to that real quick. And it says what? It says, By the word of the Lord, Yahovah, the heavens were made, and all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth, he, verse 9, for he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast or came to be solid. Um, he created the host of the heavens, the stars, quite possibly, or maybe the angels because he is the Lord of hosts. Okay. Anyways. Um, then God said, oh, that's important too, isn't it? Then God said, Elohim said, let there be light. That means the word of God was in the beginning with God. Like John 1 says, the word creates. The word creates. The Father speaks. The word is produced. It's all uh, a wonderful mystery. God saw the light was good, pleasing, useful. And he affirmed and sustained it. And then God separated the light, distinguishing it from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning. One day, Yom Echad. Yom Echad. Day one, the first day. Uh, Echad is something you'd hear the Jewish people say a lot. It's in what's called the Shema. Uh, basically, it's a, um, a prayer that they learn when they're very small. And they repeat it all the time. Uh, Nicole, looking at the uh, chat here, Psalm 33, 6, was that the reference? Yes, 33, 6, and 9. Um, and Mary Beth points out the hover with the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the water. Same word over Mary when the uh, Messiah was announced to her, right? Overshadowed her, right? Hovering, yes. Very good. 
Praise the Lord. Um, and so again, we have, uh, anyway, my point was what, uh, Yom Echad, Echad, meaning one, but as in the day, day one, the first day, the singular day, you have two parts, right? The light and the darkness, or the day and the night make up one. So when you say the Lord God, the Lord is one, or hero Israel, the Lord your God is Echad, uh, it's a clue that actually Jesus is your God. Father and Son together. Always has been and always will be. And of course, where they are, Holy Spirit is. Can't separate God from God. Right? Can't be done. Um, so that's why he's here in this account, obviously. Um, and God said, let there be an expanse in the sky, in the midst of the waters. Let it separate the waters below from the waters above. Um, it's as, as an aside, we see the, by the way, it says, let there be light. And there was, and it created the first day with it, but I don't see a sun there. It's just interesting to note that. And then again, how does this tie into the end? Because we see in Revelation 22 that the lamb was the light thereof. There was no need for the sun. Just throwing it out there. Uh, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and divide it, which were under from the which was above. And the God called the firmament, firmament or expanse heaven. And there was evening and morning the second day. I had to draw a picture on that um, in my Bible. That's where we get, it's heavens, plural, right? There, there's a heaven, there's three levels, right? There's a firmament, there's waters under it, there's waters over it, and of course God is in heaven. So now we have um, a multiple level situation where there's a barrier, a barrier um, established. It's a physical reality. It's a physical reality where um, things below the firmament, the the expanse, the bow, the the um, um, dome. There's a barrier there. There's an inter. There's a, a inter. Whatever. There's a space in between. Okay. And that shouldn't surprise us then that we hear about things later uh, that we would call mid heaven or the second heaven and then the third heaven. I Paul which says went to or someone who I know in the Lord went to the third heaven. Um, is a place where beings exist that we uh, in the first heaven, so to speak, and all we see is the sky that we can't see. And blessed is he who has not seen and yet. Who has believed for faith is the faith in what's hoped for the things unseen. This is what God is desiring to have faith in the, uh, in him, in the things you can't see. Um, all right. So he called the firmament heaven. Oh, by the way, Hebrews 4 12, Hebrews 4 12, um, to me is in play here as well. It's not only a physical reality of, the heavens and the separation there and the, the dome or the firmament, the expanse that's set up in between. Uh, what does Hebrews 4.12 say? Let's flip on. La, 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 la. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow. And it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him, to whom we must give account. So I think that has to do with it as well. Be that as it may. Um, verse 9. Then God said... Elohim, let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place, 
stand, standing, pulling together, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. You could see that's where an ocean would come from. It receded and gathered into, into one place. God called the dry land earth, the gathering of the waters he called seas, and God saw that this was good, pleasing, useful, and he affirmed and sustained it. Um, I'm going to get rid of that to make it easier to read. Then God, so God said, let the earth sprout tender vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit according to their kind, whose seed is in them upon the earth. And it was so. Um, also, again, interesting that life, verse 11 here, right? He's, he's commanding the earth. He's speaking to the earth. He's just speaking to it. That vegetation would grow. With, again, without the sun. So the light is speaking. The word of God is speaking. Life recreating life. It's even, it's even recreating itself even without the sun. Isn't that amazing? The earth sprouted and abundantly. What what is possible when when God is on the scene? Uh, the earth sprouted and abundantly produced vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. He affirmed and sustained it. And there was evening and morning, the third day. And God said, "Let there be light bearers, or lights, in the firmament of the heavens. Let them be." in the expanse of the heavens, to separate the day from the night and let them be useful for signs or tokens of God's provident care. And that's the, that's the, that's a really good note. I like the amplified there. That's the point of being useful for signs or uh, what does it say? Signs and seasons, right? God is saying he cares about us. He's from the beginning he cares about his creation. He loves us. He wants to nurture life. And we as part of that. And the signs are obviously for us, his children. Uh, for making seasons, days, and years. Let them be useful as lights in the expanse of the heavens to provide light on the earth. And it was so. Just as he commanded, God made the two great lights, the greater light, the sun, to rule the day, and the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. He made the galaxies of stars also, that is, all the amazing wonders in the heavens. God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to provide light upon the earth, to rule over the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. He affirmed and sustained it. And there was evening and there was morning. A fourth day. Then God said, let the waters swarm and abundantly produce living creatures and let birds soar over the earth in the open expanse of the heavens. And even that phrase, um, soar, uh, soar in the open expanse and things, that's the same type of language as in verse to what the Holy Spirit was doing over the waters. God created the great sea monsters, creatures, and every living creature that moves, with which the water swarmed according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and he affirmed and sustained it. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening there was morning, a fifth day, swimming and flying animals first, for God's own reasons. Then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kind, livestock, crawling things, wild animals of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so, because he had spoken them into creation. I don't see the room for evolution here. So God made the wild animals of the earth according to their kind and the cattle according to their kind and everything that creeps and crawls on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. 
and he affirmed and sustained it, even though we, we know God is true and we love God and everything he does is great. But I've got it when, you know, I'm just thinking of the future. And when I, when I get some time with the Lord in the millennium or, or after, Lord, what were you thinking with the stink bugs? I don't get it. In fact, most bugs, I don't get it. What is the purpose? Anyways, that's just me. Uh, then God said, and here's the important part, let us, us, plural, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness, not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness. Well, I don't know about that. I'm going to have to quarrel with that note there in the, uh, in the Bible. Uh, in the note of the Amplified Bible, not in the original, of course. Uh, I don't see why our likeness would not be physical. I don't see that at all. I, I see no reason to think that because well, the fancy word is anthropomorphic, right? Every time God shows up in the scripture, he looks like a man. Right? Um... So I don't see the problem with that, being a physical likeness. Um, But as well, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we have a soul, we have a spirit, right? We have a body, a flesh and blood body for now, then it'll be a spiritual one at the resurrection. But we still have a body that we're in, and we still have a spirit within us that gives us life. And then the soul, basically, which is our will, our desires, our emotions, all those in-between things, kind of like the heavens, right? And anyways, the point is we're multifaceted uh, creatures as well with three parts, just like God, because we're in his image. And let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea. Oh, by the way, uh, those of us who are passionate about bringing the gospel to Muslims, um, In the Quran, there are several places where it basically just rips off the Bible in from this verse and says God will refer to himself as us, and they just kind of brush that off. Muslims are big on the God has no son, God is not a father. There is none but this one single God, and yet he refers to himself as us in the Quran because of this. Because of the actual word of God that we just read. Okay. Um, and give him authority, them, the, the man, kind, right? Mankind. Let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and cattle over the entire earth and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him male and female. He created them. And God blessed them, granting them a certain authority. Yeah, a lot of it, pretty much all of it, and said to them, be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth and subjugate it, putting it under your power. This is the original intent of mankind, to rule, literally rule over the most beautiful planet in all creation. Subjugate it and rule over, dominate the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. I don't dominate, I don't see that in a cruel way. It just means you are created to use these things. They are for you. Um, And every living thing that moves upon the earth. So God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of the entire earth, and every tree which has fruit yielding seed. It shall be food for you. So vegetarians at the beginning... And to all the animals on the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that moves on the ground, and to everything in which there is the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. So that means every animal is supposed to be vegetarian at the beginning. And it was so, because he commanded it. God saw everything he had made, and behold, it was very good, and he validated it completely. And there was evening and there was morning, a sixth day. Um, it doesn't mean we should be vegetarians or we're in trouble with God. Okay. I love my meat. Um, just means this was how the original state of things, the, po- the point of plant life was to feed the animal life and the human life. 
Okay, don't get hung up on that. It's just what it is what it is. Uh, and then to end up here tonight, the point of going through this, that yes, we see this is how it was in the beginning. And yes, this is where the end times are going. This is where we're going to end up, beginning the end. And then we have something else. So the heavens and the earth were completed and all their hosts, all their inhabitants. And by the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done. And he rested, ceased, stopped working on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, made it holy, set apart as his own. That is set it apart as holy from other days. Because in it, he rested from all his work, which we had, he had created and done. So there's a very um, simple plan, um, narrative of the great story of the Bible, the great story of God, in that we're in the middle of it. I tell folks often when I teach is the story is not over. Um, you're in the middle of it just because you think the Bible's an old book doesn't mean it's done because it ain't. Um, major things yet uh, must occur. And the point of those things are man manifest, manifold, excuse me, but at the end of the day, <laughs> the end of the seventh day, wh- why do we look at, uh, we've heard Chad Harvey, for example, and others teach uh, this I think very rational biblical truth in the uh, whole history of the planet um, and our our role in it as human beings, right? As children of God or potential children of God, um, that we have a six day history of, for lack of a better term, um, coming to know the Lord. And then on the seventh day, or the rest day, he rests. Sabbath day, the Sabbath millennial day, right? In the Psalms and, and Peter's epistles is the thousand years of the Lord is like one day and one day is a thousand years talking about the day of the Lord. So the day of the Lord, the millennial kingdom, however you want to phrase it, is a thousand years long, but that's his day of rest. Um, Because he's going to sit on the throne, just fulfilling all the promises, promises he's ever made to Israel to the nations, to his children who believe in him. Every single one of these promises will be fulfilled on that day of rest. And he really will rest on that throne. And he's never going to have to fight anyone or lift a finger after he sits down. His law will go forth. It will be followed. And if not, the Father's going to take care of it. There won't be any rain on you if you don't come over for tabernacles, etc., etc., and there'll be a highway of holiness, not just in the promised land of Israel, but all the way from Egypt to Assyria. So much so that those nations will be considered p- almost partners or, or uh, co-inheritors, uh, co-princes, um, if you will, uh, with Israel herself. And that is a tremendously wonderful promise and something that today doesn't look like we're anything close to. In the world, if you look at those nations, but that's the plan, uh, and that's where we're going, and that's not the end, right? That's, even that's not the end. Even the end of the millennium, the end of the thousand years of Jesus Himself on the earth ruling the nations with a rod of iron, even that, not the end. It's only at that time. Like Paul would say, only after that, then the last enemy to be defeated is death, the last enemy to be put under his feet. No one will ever die again. No one, because everyone will be either his child or have chosen the lake of fire. And that's it. And then, and then we're actually back to Genesis in a way, right? We've come back to the state that he created originally, back to the, uh, his children love him, who know him. He walks with us. We we know our God. He will be with us forever. Yahweh Shema. God is here. He is here. And then the Father, it says, comes and takes a look at his kingdom so that God may be all in all. That's the 
That was what the scripture saith on that, friends. And so that's going to be a wonderful, wow, what a, what a time. And if you believe, if we confess and repent to the cross of Jesus right now, no matter what you've done, friend, it can all be forgiven. Go to him right this second. If you've never called on him before, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. And he will. He will. No matter what it is. He says he's faithful to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Even those of us who have been saved, who, who want to rededicate ourselves to him right now, do it right now. Do it today. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait another day. Don't put it off. Be the man or woman of God he called you to be. Some of us have been known for years and years and years what he's called us to be, but we just can't give up this one little thing or that little thing or this behavior keeps cropping up or this stronghold in our mind or we this doubt that always comes back or this lack of faith here and there or, or whatever. It's time to put that to an end. Uh, and as this time at end time church comes to an end, not just tonight, but this era, and it really truly is uh, an era in that um, the Lord really did tell me to ask Jake to do this with me because going out two by two is his design. Just, I don't want to put it in a man woman context, but the point is it's good for a man to have a partner. Okay. Um, and so he really did tell uh, us to do it this way. And I believe we have been faithful to that. And I thank Jake immensely for what he's all that he's committed um, to this great work. And um, all of you are part of that as well. So, uh, praise God, yes, the beginning is over. Beginning is ended. We've reached the end of the beginning, but it's far from over. Uh, I want to say let's be obedient, just like Jake uh, has proven now time and again. Be obedient to the call of the Lord. His sheep hear his voice. So just, just say yes, Father, and do it. Just obey even if you're scared, even if you don't get it, even if we don't uh, comprehend, even if nobody's agreeing, right? If you know he's speaking to you, there is, there is nothing you have to worry about. Nothing. And he's never going to steer you wrong. And he's never going to break covenant with you. And he's never going to uh, break covenant with your marriage or, or with any of that stuff. He's always good. And he's always right. <laughs> Seems silly to say these things, but we, Really need reminders. I need reminders of that constantly. Uh, yes, God knows what he's talking about. He's good. He's right. He's not going to hurt you. If any, if there's any correction, if there's any chastisement that needs to come, it's for your good and you will benefit and you will stop hurting. Amen. All right, friends, um, that is it. I am going to post uh, the link to our what we call our after party. I think tonight, obviously, you can say whatever you'd like um, in terms of Jake and, and his time and maybe what you've learned over the years or months or days or weeks, however long you've been fellowshipping with us. Feel free to do that. Um, but it's also going to be a time of prayer and um, intercession, intercessory prayer. So let's make sure to engage in that. And I think uh, we should be more um, intentional about that. I'm posting it right here. So if you're not in the endtime.church chat room, please go there now. Just go to endtime.church slash live, and you will see the link and the password to get in there right now. All right, guys. Um, love you so much. Again, even if you've never... Yeah, somebody laughing at my stink bug comment. Yeah, that's, I can't stand those things. Um, we, we, I love you so much. Please pray for me. Pray for the elders here. Um, uh, Pastor Chris Anderson, who you've seen a lot. Taryn, who you've seen a lot, obviously. But uh, Phil and Paul, uh, maybe who, who you see less of, but they are very, very active. And and Tim and Pastor Randy and um, I'm like forgetting anyone. Am I? So, I don't think so. God forgive me. Um, but anyways, pr pray pray for us as a group. Pray for us individually. Pray for our homes. Let us know how we can pray for you. Um, and uh, we want to proceed as commanded, as always. All right, friends. Love you so much. Until next time. Uh, for Jake McCandless, this is Christopher Manti. I love you in the Lord. Lord willing, see you next Monday.